memory reclamation here, I mean that there is no um, automatic garbage collector running in the background, but that the programmer is implementing the reclamation um, manually. Before I want to go into the details of our contribution, I would like to recap log-free data structures and show why memory reclamation is a non-trivial task and why it gives you headaches for verification. <clears throat> As an example, I would like to go through uh, Michael and Scott's queue. Um, the queue is organized as a singly linked list of nodes, as you can see on the right hand side. The nodes contain two fields, a data field, I just put uh, ABC here as a placeholder, and pointers establishing the link. Additionally, there is a shared variable head that points to the first element of the, of the queue. And I would like to go through the DQ um, method here. Um, I simplified it a bit to, uh, to just see the code that is really important for the log-free aspect. And with this example, I would like to show you two things. On the one hand, I would like to show you why memory reclamation is not easy in log-free data structures, and on the other hand, how log-free data structures work. To do this, I need three threads. Um, although this looks like uh, really complicated, but uh, the, the third thread, thread X, we will only use to show why memory reclamation is not trivial. And actually, it will do only very little. It will start off by writing, uh, by reading out the shared head pointer and um, by having a pointer into the data structure. And from now on, we focus on threads one and two to see how log-free code works. Usually, the approach to programming log-free data structures is to um, traverse the data structure without any synchronization and compute a set of updates that uh, the thread wants to perform. But it only, it does not apply the changes uh, to the shared structure, but stores them locally. And only in the last step, checks whether the data structure has changed since the thread began its traversal. And then if this, uh, the structure hasn't changed, applies its updates. Um, so let's see how this is implemented in Michael and Scott's queue. The threads start off by uh, traversing the data structure. So they start off at a shared head pointer. So they read it out into, um, local copies. And they can do this, as I said, without synchronization, so they can do it com completely in parallel. As a next step, they try to find out where they want to move the head pointer, because they want to remove an element, as that we are doing in DQ. So they access um, node A's next field to find the second um, node in the data structure, so they acquire a pointer to node B. And then they try to move the shared pointer head from A to B. So to do that, they first check that the data structure has not changed. They do this by comparing their local version of head with the shared version. If it coincides, then they uh, move the head, otherwise they retry. So let's see what happens if thread one is, su is successful in doing so. It will move uh, the head to node B, and now thread two cannot uh, do its, uh, its update because its local version of of head does not coincide with the shared one. So thread two retries, now reads out the head again, now reads out the second, uh, the now second node in the data structure, and then performs the update. And this is exactly what uh, we expected to happen if two threads do an EQ. However, <clears throat> while this is functionally uh, what we expect, we did not reclaim memory yet. So if we would just uh, return from the procedure, A and B would be um, leaked. So we want to delete the memory and um, return afterwards. But this is kind of problematic because thread X is still there and it will, try, uh, it will access the now deleted memory and potentially crash. So what, what did we see here? We saw that log-free data structure do, structures do unsynchronized traversal. And as a consequence, if there is a reclamation going on, they cannot detect whether the references are safe. To overcome this problem, there's a thing called safe memory reclamation. And on a high level, what it does, it provides an inter a mechanism for the programmer with, with, to defer um, deletions until they are safe. Intuitively, the log-free data structure provides feedback to the SMR algorithm, and the SMR algorithm eventually decides when a free or a deletion can be done. There, this is an active field of research, and I don't want to go into the details. 
I just want to show you how this would like it would look like in the Michael and Scott queue. Um, the code changed a bit. I go. Uh, I explain this as I go along. As before, thread X would read out the shared pointer head, and now it would do a protect. It would protect this node. This tells the SMR algorithm that thread X is going to access it, so that, uh, and tells it that any retire uh, any deletion should be deferred. And for the simplicity, I just assume that those uh, two commands uh, are executed atomically. As before, thread one again reads out uh, the head pointer, also issues a protection. I didn't, don't put it on the slide here because it's not relevant. And then it performs it, uh, its DQ. And in the end, it does not delete the memory, but it calls a retire. So it, it tells the SMR algorithm that thread, uh, that node A should be deleted. But the SMR algorithm now sees that this uh, node A is protected, so it um, defers the deletion. So thread uh, X can now access the, um, the node and continue its operation without crashing. If it continues, it will, as before, reread uh, the head pointer, uh, the new head pointer, and move the protection to now node B, which allows the SMR to free node A. While this is exactly what we wanted, so we have now a working log-free queue with memory reclamation and threads do not crash. But we didn't make the code easier to understand and to verify. So I want to give you a brief overview of what is going on in the verification literature. There are two types of works. There are manual proofs. Those proofs require a deep understanding of what you're doing. So you need to understand the proof uh, method, you need to understand the log-free data structure, the SMR algorithm, and you need to understand the uh, interplay of this. And maybe this is the reason why only few works do actually give formal um, manual proofs considering reclamation. And also this complexity is why I like to do, uh, or I would like to have an automated uh, technique but in the automated world, tools can only handle garbage collected code or some strange custom semantics where they do the explicit deletion and then um, allow the, the access of the freed memory, which is not what happens in practice. So long story short, there are no automated techniques working for um, log-free data structures with safe memory reclamation. And I want to make, uh, give you an intuition why this is the case. So that's the code of uh, the full code of Michael and Scott's queue. I don't want you to read it. I just want to look at the sizes here. And that's the GC implementation that assumes the garbage collector. Tools can handle this. If we now add the retire and protect business we saw before, we add six lines of code. That's not too bad. However, we also have to add the uh, protect and retire implementations, which give us another 52 lines of codes. And as you might know, if you double the size of, uh, of the input of your verification tool, it will probably fail you. And it's not that the, um, the code at the right-hand side is just some easy code. It's actually another uh, log-free data structure. So we went from verifying a log-free data structure to verifying two log-free data structures that are intertwined. So what can we do about verification? Towards our contribution, I would like to stay, uh, take a step back and look at uh, the system design of those log-free data structures with reclamation. What we have is a log-free data structure on the left-hand side and the SMR algorithm on the right-hand side. And there's a well-defined uh, well API that the log-free uh, data structure uses. The only task of the SMR algorithm is to free memory. And this is is happening with something like a memory management system or as I call it here, an allocator. So the SMR algorithm will call a uh, free, for example, on the allocator and the memory that is freed might find its way back to the log-free data structure with the malloc. In particular, what we do not have is any direct influence of the SMR algorithm onto the log-free data structure. And it is this system design that we exploit in our first uh, contribution, a compositional verification approach to log-free data structures with um, safe memory reclamation. What we do is, or what we suggest is, that, w that we give a formal specification to the API between the log-free data structure and the SMR. 
this specification states which addresses can be freed and when they can when they can be freed. And then the monolithic uh, verification task decomposes into two. First, you verify that the SMR algorithm, the implementation, satisfies the specification. As a second task, you verify the log-free data structure. But now, you do not need to consider the implementation of the um, SMR algorithm, but you can use its specification to perform the freeze when the implementation could do this. To convince you that the um, specification of an SMR algorithm is, in fact, easier or simpler to handle than a then the implementation, I like to discuss, um, give you an example how a, such a um, specification could look like. And to, uh, to do this, I give a specification for a well-known SMR algorithm called hazard pointers. In fact, that's the one I had in mind when I was writing the second example with the retire and protect. The hazard pointers implementation guarantees you the following thing. It guarantees that a retired node is not reclaimed if it has been protected continuously since before the retire. And that's the guarantee that programmers rely on when they write their um, log-free data structure against the SMR. And we can formalize this um, with a simple automaton like the one at the bottom. Actually, this is a negative specification, so we um, accept all uh, those behaviors that we do not want to see. So this automaton is um, parametrized in a thread T and an address A, and it basically says if T um, invokes the protect method and the method returns, and then another thread might uh, retire this address A, then it must not be freed. This is uh, encoded by reaching a final state. With such a um, specification at hand, we can sit down and implement a um, verification tool, and so we did. With our tool, we could verify um, uh, some um, SMR algorithms against such special specifications as I just showed you. For example, we could verify the hazard pointers implementations in roughly two seconds, and our implementation, or the implementation that we verified, supported dynamic um, thread joining and parting from the data uh, from the SMR algorithm. While I don't, I don't want to go into the details of the experiments, I want to stress that the compositional approach didn't help us in verifying the log-free data structure. The, space, the, the state space of the log-free uh, data structure still explodes, and the reason for this is that reallocations give you a real headache in, in the verification. To overcome this problem, we had a second insight to reduce the state space of the exploration. What we showed is the following theorem. We showed that for verification, it is sound to restrict reallocations to a single address. So it's not necessary to consider every address to be reallocated, but it's sufficient to consider only one. There are two requirements to this uh, theorem. First, the specification needs to be invariant of, uh, to reallocations. This is typically the case for the uh, um, specifications we used. The second uh, requirement is that log-free data structures need to be free from ABAs. Also, this is um, usually the case. And even more, those requirement, requirements can be, I would, I would say, easily checked. The first one is only a requirement on the automaton, so it's some language theoretic uh, requirement. And the second one can be checked on the reduced state space. So what you can do is you can do your verification, do a ex, uh, state space exploration with only a single address being reallocated. And on top of that state space, you can check whether an ABA occurred. So this, one, this single address uh, that is reallocated allows you to check for ABAs and to check whether your data structure is ABA free. And with this, we were able to verify log-free data structures with uh, safe memory reclamation. Um, the first lines are, again, our running example, Michael uh, and Scott's queue. As a baseline, we um, used a specification that did not allow ver um, reclamation at all. Then the verification time is seven minutes in our tool. It is higher for, uh, than for typical GC tools because we have um, 
to care for more stuff to detect, for example, the ABAs, and we have to track the, uh, the automata specification. So our baseline is higher than a, a, a re off the shelf a GC tool. And then we can verify, for example, Michael and Scott skew against hazard pointers, and our verification will be, uh, takes roughly uh, two hours to be completed. And we also uh, could show other um, or establish correctness, in this case, linearizability of other uh, log free data structures like TriberStack and DGLMQ. Thank you for your attention. Questions? Hi. Uh, I was wondering if you could say anything about the relation to the work of Nakshan Cohen. Uh, he's done several work on several several papers on automatic uh, uh, safe memory reclamation for lock-free data structures, and he had one in Uppsala last year, which was a fully automatic technique uh, work uh, that was integrated into LVM. I was wondering if you had any comments on that, because I could imagine that could also simplify the. So uh, I mean another. That could completely modularize the verification effort if you don't have to change the lock-free data structure at all. Oh, I'm, I'm not sure, um, can't re uh, recall this method from the top of my head. Um, but, I mean, it turns out that many uh, log-free data structures in practice will use uh, such techniques. And, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe okay. we should talk we'll offline to have a look into that. So you said you verified has a pointer library on there, like on its own. But if I recall correctly, it actually does depend on the data structure, right? So you need to set the pointer and then check that your announcement is not too late. How do you deal with this? Sorry, can we repeat so, it? So as far as I recall, in hazard pointer, hazard pointer library is not really a standalone, standalone thing. You have to like do some checks on the data structure after you set the hazard pointer. So these checks, do they go into, do you consider them to be part of the hazard pointer part you mean, or and how do you deal with this? You mean checks like you do, you issue the protection and then verify that? Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, no, this is part of the data structure. So our um, specification would detect that the announcement would come in too late and then allow the free. The, the specification of the hazard pointer? Right. Okay. Yeah, one in the first row. So I was wondering for the this automated verification. So I imagine you use some kind of abstraction, like some abstract domain. So how did it go? We do a thread modular analysis. Um, and yeah, so we verify this for an arbitrary number of client threads. And we do, as a heap abstraction, we track um, reachability. Yeah, basically we, do, we track reachability among the pointers that are live in the program. But this is like some standard analysis it's, that exists. Uh, it was there. introduced by Abdullah et al. I think 2013.